inside of the switches and the networking devices that we work with, there are a lot of different configuration settings. And if these configuration settings are not quite right, we'll see problems like this. One example is very poor throughput. We're connected to the network. We've got a signal. We're able to communicate. We're able to talk to the internet. We're able to do file transfers to our servers. But we're just not getting very good performance. And it's consistently bad performance. And every time we perform a file transfer, we're getting exactly the same bad performance every single time. If this is an extreme configuration issue, we may not be getting any connectivity at all. We plug in the network, plug into the server or the device we're using. We get no link lights. We get no connectivity at all. Sometimes we'll not get connectivity, but we do get a link light. So that tells me that at least we're getting some type of signal through the cable. But something about that configuration on one end or the other is not quite right. And we might want to investigate why I'm getting a link light and maybe why I'm seeing activity lights, but I'm still not able to get any type of connectivity through the network. There are a number of different settings when you're configuring a port. You've got speed, you've got duplex. A number of those things have to be synchronized on both sides. You might manually set those up so that both sides are exactly the same. But there's also a setting called automatic. You set the port to auto, and it's supposed to figure out the other side's configuration. Those two are supposed to talk back and forth to each other and synchronize as to exactly what they should be running to. The problem, of course, is sometimes auto isn't exactly auto. And although we've set it for automatic, two sides might come up and be configured automatically, but with different configurations on both sides. That particular situation is becoming rarer and rarer as time goes by, but you still run into situations where that occurs. And that's why some people prefer just setting everything manually. And that way, they know for sure when they're setting a configuration on a port that it's going to work exactly the way they would expect. If you are setting things manually, obviously one of those configuration settings is the speed. If you set the speed incorrectly on one side or the other, they are not matched on both sides, you're not going to have any type of link at all. If you set one side to 100 megabit and the other side to a gigabit, they're not going to be able to communicate. Those use completely different methods to send those signals from one side to the other. And so they're talking a language that neither one can understand. You have to make sure the speed is exactly the same on both sides. Now another setting is duplex. And unlike speed, you can set duplex to be half duplex on one side and full duplex on the other, and they will connect to each other. The problem, however, is there's going to be very poor throughput between those because one side is expecting to handle communication in one way, and one side is trying to handle communication in a completely different way. And you'll end up having collisions and problems with throughput if you try to configure those settings that way. So you want to make sure that either both sides are set to half duplex duplex, or both sides are set to full duplex. And then you can be assured that it's going to be sending traffic as efficiently as possible. If you're on a very large switch that has a number of VLANs configured inside of it, you might want to check and make sure that when you're plugging in that you're connecting to the right VLAN. If you've been assigned an IP address and you plug into that link and you get a link light and you see status lights, you're seeing activity on that particular network connection, but you still don't have a connection to be able to communicate and ping other devices on the network, it may be because that particular port has been put into the wrong VLAN. So you may want to look at the configuration of the switch and make sure not only is my speed correct and not only is my duplex correct, but also make sure that that particular port is assigned to the VLAN that's expected for the device that's plugging into it. By examining all of these different port configurations and making sure that you have everything synchronized, you can be assured that the connectivity and throughput of all of your devices will be optimized.